let's take a look at American history. Washington, one of our great founding fathers, taught that independence is critical to optimizing life quality. And so he helped start a revolution. The system that he put in place is still going strong today where people are free to maximize their ideals in the quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes, Booker T. Washington was a remarkable American. Oh, sure, this Washington did great things too. <laughs> but the fact that many of us have been conditioned to immediately associate revolutionary ideals and independence with George Washington shows how our context of American greatness is often skewed towards white. Look, do you want to help ease racial tension in the United States? Well, let's work together to understand that there is systematic inequality that makes it easy to ignore his potential. These forces can only be mitigated if we work together to create more pathways to prosperity. Largely because of structural, political, and economic forces, less than 1% of African American males today are architects, engineers, medical doctors, firefighters. Meanwhile, more than five times this rate are locked up, incarcerated. Funny how the fewer jobs there are for them, the more jobs there are for people who work here. I, as a social scientist, know that there is a strong co correlation between job opportunities and incarceration. As job opportunities increase, incarceration goes down. So what can we do? In America, we as a people have the opportunity to create more pathways to prosperity to people who have been systematically ignored. In this sense, we can all learn a lot about how to educate and develop these individuals. So where are the best lessons on how to educate and develop these individuals found? At historically black colleges and universities, we know a lot about reaching the brilliant minds of African-American students. We've been doing it for over 100 years now. The importance and relevancy of HBCU learning techniques have never been greater. As our economy continues its transition away from manufacturing to digital age modes of production and consumption, providing learning opportunities to students often denied such resources is as important as ever. At my home institution, Tuskegee University, we pride ourselves on providing high quality learning opportunities to our beautiful students. During my time at Tuskegee, I have developed a great appreciation for our ability to reach students both socially and academically. So, you want to create more pathways to prosperity? Let's take a page from the HBCU playbook. First, focus on where students are going, not where they come from. Too often, student evaluation has more to do with their past than their future. Some of our students come from underperforming high schools, unstable families, and unhealthy neighborhood environments. These factors affect how some of our students look on paper, specifically standardized test scores. But whose standard are we following anyway? The blind reliance on standardization eliminates the virtues found in variation. Thus, mainstream education becomes 
one size that fails to fit all. Coming from Southside Chicago, Detroit, Atlanta, Birmingham, Watts, St. Louis, many of our students have already developed key intangibles vital to success that don't show up on a standardized test score. Provide them with a process to prove their ability and many of them will shine. Just as important, HBCUs provide young students with the opportunity to maximize campus life without compromising the positive cultural traits that characterize their identity. They are in environments where black lives already matter. They wear their afros and their braids and their dreadlocks. They perform their step shows and spoken word on the yard, enjoy strolling at calf parties without having to justify their behavior. This freedom to be who they are empowers them on campus and in the classroom. Students who are free to express their cultural selves tend to be more proactive in the classroom and in life in general. They leave college with the belief that they encompass within themselves the traits necessary to compete in the world. Positive self-perception, self-determination, and pride are essential psychological assets that motivate us to fight through hard times and push towards higher goals. We all know the importance of believing in yourself, but before you can believe in yourself, you have to like yourself. I am proud of my cultural heritage. HBCUs have always been great at helping young African Americans develop and maintain a positive self-perception by elevating their cultural heritage above the negative stereotypes often associated with them. And it's all done within the context of a sincere love for our students. Another thing, the best professors are not just instructors, they are mentors too. Expose students to men and women who will not only teach academic and scientific skills, but also life skills. Indeed, life skill development was a part of the original mission of HBCUs. I am proud to be a teacher mentor. I am proud to help my students develop the life skills necessary to achieve their dreams, while at the same time teaching them research methods, political economy, and statistics, with the hope that one day they would develop innovative solutions to the economic factors that detract from life quality. You see, the HBCU can teach us all the most important methods of reaching the very students that America often avoids. I challenge you to work together to create more pathways to prosperity. Focus on where students are going, not where they come from, by de-emphasizing standardized test taking as a method of overall evaluation. Acknowledge students' cultural heritage as a source of strength. And finally, and most importantly, let's take the time to mentor students, or at least help set up mentoring programs at schools across the United States. Please, America, work with me and help me in my quest to create more pathways to prosperity. Thank you.